day four of our camping trip up here in the northwest of Australia. We've just spent the past four days with my friends at another campsite, spearfishing, snorkeling, doing a bit of drinking. There's been like 10 or 15 kids all running around, so Lenny's been loving it. The sand and the sleeping situation hasn't been perfect. So by day four, we're all ready to pack up and leave and go to our next spot where we can have a shower, put a load of washing on and just get rid of all the sand. Very, very sandy. We are so glad you're going to be joining us in this episode as we head even further north and find a kind of sweet spot. Not far enough north for the crocodiles and deadly jellyfish and not too far south where the water's freezing and the great whites hang out. You'll also get to meet our friends from Back to Basics. I have the most trouble with shooting, they're so cunning underwater. And spearfish some remote islands with us. Why do they make things so impossible to get in their bag? I'm sure it's quite yeah. easy to um, do if you're doing it properly. Highlight of the trip, Kate? Leaving? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, definitely it's not clean how much sea life is here. And I reckon like, come here Lenny, sitting around the campfire with everyone. What was your highlight, Lenny? He wants a shower with his trucks, he said. <laughs> yeah. You ready for a shower with your truck? Yeah. Me too, mate. <laughs> Riley just asked me to help. I'm so, so tired. We made the mistake of putting the rubbish a bit deep, did we? No, made no mistakes. Mm. Today's not gonna be a very big day of filming, everyone. It's been a big trip with two kids, all this stuff. <laughs> We've had enough. Money, Money. They need to learn the word money from. Yeah, we have some money for ice cream, Lenny. Money ice pole. Icy pole. Money ice I said you walk up the stairs, there's no sand. Maybe you got a little bit on your feet. Brush it off, put your spear gun in the corner because there's room for that. Walk inside, have a shower and then go to bed. Sounds good to me. I was chasing Lenny down the main street, trying to stop him from running into cars. Because being on land is far more dangerous than being on a boat. And stubbed my toe. Ooh. He's pretty quick. Ew. <laughs> Lenny, do you want to come see Mama? Yeah. Come on. Hello. We were all absolutely flogged. Kate unpacked the entire car. I had a snooze. Elena had a massive sleep. And Lenny's been watching Octonauts. What's for dinner? Exactly. Camping really makes you appreciate was, all of this again. It was good to disconnect like we normally do. Same. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like going for a big sale. Oh, yeah. So they threw in an extra pizza. The lady who's the patron actually owns the restaurant, so we're not going to be hungry. <laughs> I dropped these on the sandy floor. <laughs> Lenny, do you want some sandy bread? I like bread. I'm so happy to be eating real. Well, this isn't really real. I'm very grateful that we didn't have to cook it on a tiny little camp oven. Did you have some wine whilst I was away? No. <laughs> About the time me and your mum crossed the Atlantic, we started in the Canary Islands and we sailed across the Atlantic Ocean and we went to Antigua. The Antigua was the door, Dada. We said, I think that we should cross the Atlantic Ocean and we said, that's a good idea. So we bought. No, that's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. That's what some people said, yeah. But we did it anyway. So we bought a whole bunch of food and then we needed to make some repairs to the boat and then it was time to leave so we said goodbye to everyone we left the marina and then the wind started blowing and we were on the boat and mama turned the boat into the wind and dada hoisted the sail and then we turned around and we went with the wind and as we moved further away from the islands the wind picked up and the waves picked up but we were very happy because we were out on the ocean and we were sailing and sailing and sailing Lenny, how's your bath? What? <laughs> <laughs> I 
have just downloaded the weather and we've got a professional forecast here and 18, 19 knots and it doesn't die down again until maybe Tuesday at 2 a.m. we could go for a dive. Wednesday and Thursday are probably pretty good or a big day Wednesday. I've been following this dude on Instagram, Morgan Massman. Yeah. We've uh, been DMing with best mates now and I've got really inspired by some of the stuff that he's done different sorts of filming. I am so excited about this. We went past the market to grab some food on our way to the dive site where we could test out the new housing. Today we'd be happy just knowing that we actually sealed it up correctly and that there were no leaks, but we did actually manage to capture some sea life in action. Also wanted to give you guys an update as to our travel plans. What are we even doing here in far northwest Australia? I don't know, Elena. What, what are we doing? We have a partially built boat and another boat overseas which we haven't sold. Vietnam has shut down completely because of COVID. We knew there was going to be some sort of gigantic delay with the boat build because of COVID. For those of you who are hoping to buy La Vagabond in the auction, the auction's been delayed. We're going to be pulling the boxes down that we boxed up. And, and unpacking. Yeah. Which is... I was not expecting to do this, but COVID. Anyway, but if you're yeah, around an emu, a, if you lay on your back sure. and move your legs like a bus, <laughs> I told you. Emus will come up to you because they think That's one of true, their friends actually. has fallen over. Well, you're a hot emu well, mama. The weather had really been turning it on for us lately. A combination of low tide, a full moon, and this shipwreck made this afternoon look like a scene out of a movie. It felt like I was dreaming. I'm always so intrigued by shipwrecks. The Mildura was a cattle ship on its way from the Kimberley when it got lost in a cyclone back in 1907. The crew was rescued, but none of the cattle on board made it. You see the sea urchins? And by the I'm starting the business. Here you go, mate. You're a bit puffed. No. No? It's a bit cold? Yeah. Yeah? Look. It's Lenny. It's Lenny. Man. Tonight, we were blessed with some wonderful company, good wine, and some tunes. A fair few of you may have already recognised them, but these are our friends Jack and Fran, who are actually from another YouTube channel called Back to Basics. We're really excited to introduce you to them tomorrow when we go freediving with them, but you'll really get to know them in our next episode. Dan Elena. Unfortunately not. Kate this could year. Sing, I wish we could. Yay. How's Darwin going, friend? He's Darwin. dancing. He, he really it. liked that last yeah. one. Yeah, Darwin was right into that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Good news is we've found some clear water, so we're gonna jump in and see if we can find some fish. <laughs> the same issue over here. I've been told to watch out for Red Emperor. Red Emperor. Red Emperor is gonna be number one. A coral trout would be nice, or a coronation trout. They're my main ones. And what about the black spot tusky? Oh yeah, maybe some wahoo out the back here. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
just wanted to take a quick second to share something with you, something that we appreciate and we've been using a lot lately since we've been traveling. It's kind of a part of our daily routine. We love listening to audiobooks. Riley and I love getting stuck into a good novel or learning something. And if I can just whack my AirPods in and go for a walk or potter around the house and continue doing what I was doing and listen at the same time, we're having a win. Our hands are pretty full these days. <laughs> so today I'm gonna to recommend the author Leanne Moriarty. I knew her before they turned her books into cool TV series and movies. I'm recommending the audiobook Nine Perfect Strangers. Great place to start, but all of her work is really damn good. You'll be busy there for a while. So if you're not on Audible yet and you have no idea where it is, it's basically a space where you can stream and download an insane amount of audiobooks. Popular titles, titles you've probably heard before, as well as their originals, which they're calling Audible Originals. Funnily enough, podcasts, meditation programs, sleep programs, even guided fitness programs. And with their membership that's super affordable, you'll get one credit per month to pick one of those popular bestseller titles that you can keep forever, they used to keep forever. And you also have access to their Plus catalog, which is a really fun place. There is thousands and thousands of audiobooks on there, podcasts, all of it, which is a lot of fun. There's just a lot of content. And yeah, so thank you Audible for sponsoring this episode. It feels really good being able to share something that we actually really love with you guys and we think you'll like too. But if you're skeptical, fear not. They are going to give you a 30 day free trial. See if you like it. You can head to audible.com forward slash SLV. I'm going to put the link in the description below as well. Um, and if you're in the United States, you can actually text SLV, that's it, to 500 500 and they'll send you an SMS back um, and you can get started that way. Cheers guys. Thank you and enjoy. Um, on with the show. Well done, mate. That is a beauty. I didn't want to give him a chance to disappear. I had to fire a lot. Oh, nice, mate. Oh yeah. Well, we're getting through the shopping list. Can you see the remora on it? Oh wow. That's a beautiful coronation trout. These are the fish that I have the most trouble with shooting. They're so cunning underwater. Uh, but for whatever reason, this one gave me a chance today. So pretty, hey? And these are my favorite eating fish. I just saw like a bit of a sand patch and I just dove down and had a little look under a ledge and hadn't seen anything. And then as I was about to leave the bottom, I looked up and he'd come in curiously and was sitting over my right shoulder. So then I clicked record. Normally at this point is when they spook and leave me for dead, but he hung around long enough and I managed to get a, a mm -hmm. shot on it. So you've never shot one? No, uh, I've shot smaller ones, but that'd be by far the biggest. I could tell you're excited because you're always so chill underwater and I saw you go like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, whoa, what's happening? What about your huge coral trout? Yeah, there was, there was a ledge which was holding a lot of fish and I was getting confused. But um, yeah, on my second dive I went down, there was a, a big grouper, like probably twice as big as that, um, and it left and then I went down again and managed to put a holding shot on that one. We got what we set out for there. Beautiful. We really did, eh? We hey? did. Hey. Well done, boys. Somehow the weather just keeps getting better and better. So beautiful, so calm, water's crystal clear, but Riley and Fran, they just can't get enough. So they're still snorkeling and um, loving it. We can't get them out of the water. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> oh, nice one, one, mate. <laughs> 
<laughs> but the good news is because of that awesome spearing session we had, we've got more than enough food for us and the whole of Agabon family, our whole family. So yeah, we can just really take it easy for the rest of the afternoon and see what other animals we can find. Yeah, sweet. I'm unfolding a chair. Um, We're here cooking a fish on the beach, Joanna. Okay, and what fish are we cooking? This is a coronation trout that Jack got. My mackerel and my coral trout are both in the esky at home, mm -hmm. waiting to be filleted. We've got a lot of fish now, we're gonna have to give some away, I reckon. Uh, we're gonna smoke a lot of it. There might be just a tiny little bit to give away at the end. Okay to whoever wants to let us rent their house here. That's the reward of Here is some fish in lieu of payment. Don't let the black skin deter you, Elena. That's how I've been taught by some knowledgeable people to cook on a fire. You let it, all that skin go black and then that'll just all peel off to a beautiful white flesh underneath. I trust you. <laughs> you go in the water. Go in the water. <laughs> We're just cooking a fish up on the beach there. This evening, I can't even believe my eyes. Complete glass off. There are humpback whales cruising past, making noises. Lenny's definitely sick and he wants to go. Don't splash, please. No, not funny. No, Bubba. Look you in the car. No. Forever. Much more beautiful than a coronation trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot here. It's, it's stinking. Lane's pits are starting to woof a bit. <laughs> People have been saying that our Australian accents are getting thicker yeah. and I must agree. Have they been getting stronger, thicker? Please let us know in the comments and while you're there give us a like and if you're new here, scub scub. We just wanted to quickly talk about the camping trip while it's fresh in our minds. So it's the day after, we've just arrived in the house, I went for a run this morning, really needed a reset. I was like mentally struggling because the camping trip was quite difficult with two kids. I don't think we could have done more than four days. I was ready to go home after the first night. Normally, I would be really well set up for a camping trip and everyone else was. We didn't have a dustpan and broom. When sand got in the tent, it wasn't getting back out again apart from Lenny's t-shirt, which I used to shoof it off over into the corner. So we were hanging out at our friend's place for most of the day because they had shade. But yeah, we just weren't yeah, set thanks, up for this camping thanks trip. Thanks Aaron and Damo for letting yeah. us. And all of the rest of the guys for yeah, just Yeah, yeah, everyone was so helpful. Encroach on there. And that's why we went, to hang out with all my friends and I got that quality time that I wanted and it was really fun, but it like came at a cost because it was quite stressful around our campsite and with the kids and how hot it was. And, and like, I was just sandy the whole time. Riley hates sand. We've come to realise it really hates it. I don't like sand. It's coarse, rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Anyway. Moving on. What are we even doing here in far northwest remote Australia? I don't know, Elena. What we, are we doing? We just wanted to go north because it's way warmer up here and we can actually swim and live in bikinis. So that's their plans for now. In the background, we're organising what we're going to do with our boat situation and all that. We have a partially built boat and another boat overseas which we haven't sold. The most recent set of plans Vietnam has shut down completely because of COVID, that's fine. We, we sort of knew that something like that would happen at some point. Of course, as we flew back to Australia, 
in April, COVID completely spiked up in Vietnam. This whole pandemic, they've been fine, and then now everyone's got it, and it's terrible. So we really thought we'd be able to get to Vietnam. Yeah, we knew there was gonna be some sort of gigantic delay with the boat build because of COVID. So our two AMAs have been built on the new boat, but they're currently not working in the factory. So we're gonna go to the Bahamas again. We get to fly back to our old boat, sail it to the Bahamas, and spend a season there with our kids. Initially, I was like, oh, a little bit disappointed, but then we get to go and sail the Bahamas again, which is just incredible. And then I started plotting courses and where we would go and, and different spots that we'd been and then hadn't been, talking to people who we were gonna have on board to help us. I got really excited. It's a pretty nice detour. And considering ever like so many people's situations right now, I think we're still some of the luckiest people ever to be flying back to our old boat, which I've said goodbye to. I've packed up the entire thing. I've cut We're gonna be pulling it. the boxes down that we boxed up and, and unpacking yeah so back to the bahamas that's the recent but, plan but it'll change report back to you again soon for those of you who are hoping to buy la vagabond in the auction the auction's been delayed keep you guys posted we're gonna do a patreon catch up in the bahamas as well too early for me to say this but we might we're thinking of doing a buddy boat with someone there's a bit of a thing going on there you can't do names out of a hat but there'll be a bunch of little competitions that we do so i'm really looking forward to that yeah that's gonna be good as well Thank you.